So I've come to Keswick for the day. I'm going to do a little vlog about the place. Uh, there's no real plan to this. I'll, this is one of my favourite places in the world. Uh, most of you will probably know I spent about 13 years living in Cumbria, commonly referred to as the Lakes, and most of those years in Cockermouth, which is about 12 miles further west along the A66 towards the coast, and just Keswick was my, my go-to place when I wasn't working. I'd come here, climb all over these fells. We're not just here in, in the northern lakes, but in the Langdales and the southern lakes. Hiking the fells, mountaineering, wild camping, that was my, my thing, I love to do it. And I'm back here today, and I thought I'd just do a little vlog and show you around, not just the town and what it has, but also talk a little bit about the surrounding fells. And it might inspire you, if you haven't already been here, to, to get here. And if you have, but you haven't really explored it, you might find this video um, really insightful. So anyway, uh, let's have a look around. It's coming up. So at the minute I'm stood in Crow Park, which is right on the northern slope of Derwent Water, that beautiful lake just behind us. Oh, but this place, man, it's just stunning. Look at it. Love Crow Park. Beautiful view today, that's Skidder. Probably one of the most um, boring mountains to walk up. Actually, it's like walking up an elephant's back. Nonetheless, any mountain is brilliant. I love walking up them. Directly in front there, that's Cat Bells, the famous hill, just over 400 metres. If you're not into mountains and you just fancy something that's a, a tiny bit challenging for you, head up to Cat Bells. We carried on walking past Cat Bells, over that mountain behind it and drop down the other side. You'll land at Honesta Pass, if you've been there before. Nice cafe there. You've got the slate mines there, which have, uh, the slate from Honesta has been used to build a lot of Keswick, you'll see by the, the buildings and the houses. Of course, you'll recognise that lake as Derwent Water. But did you know there's only one lake in the Lake District that's called a lake? And that's Bassenthwaite Lake, which is more or less in between Keswick and Cockermouth. All the other ones are, or most of the other ones are called waters. And right down there in the distance, in the middle there, in the middle of the screen, is Grange. You get there by following the, the Borrowdale Valley, and Grange down there is officially the wettest part of the UK. So those hills we're looking at now form part of the Cooldale Horseshoe with Cozy Pike on the left there, the highest point on the right is Grisdale Pike. The whole walk takes the average person about five hours, but you can either go up Cozy Pike on the left or skim along the side of it up to Seal, then Crag Hill onto Cooldale House, H-A-U-S-E, uh, where it dips down and I've wild camped there quite a few times. Then you climb again up to Grisdale Pike um, and down past Winletter Forest and back to the beginning. Keswick now was famously described as the adventure capital of the UK, and I believe rightly so. Of course, you got Fort William up there in uh, northwest of Scotland, uh, but I, th I think it's better here. And you've also got a Betsy Coyd near Capel Curig down in Snowdonia. I love it down there as well, but for me, the lakes and Keswick in particular, uh, anything you want to do, this is the place to do it, whether it's uh, on the fells, whether it's camping, whether it's on the water. Cycling, I was heavily into me cycling as well. It's just stunning, the surrounding area. Unfortunately, it's had its uh, problems with flooding over the last 10 or 12 years or so, and most famously in 2009, where Cockermouth and Keswick and Workington were heavily flooded. I lived in Cockermouth at the time, and I worked those floods in the rescue operation. It was devastating. Um, although my flat, it was on the uh, second floor, uh, my property was okay. But I couldn't get back to my property because it was under four foot of water for about three or four days and I had to stay with a friend in Keswick. So Keswick in particular needs support, it's local businesses. Some of these businesses have had to rebuild two, three times from nothing. Um, so they really appreciate the tourist industry um, for its revenue and its income streams. And one of the flashpoints for Keswick uh, is the River Greta which runs past the town centre and the bridge behind me is the kind of area which is the flashpoint for uh, the river breaking its banks and in 2009 where you can where i'm stood now the water was approximately where my head height is so all the buildings that were in this particular area in 2009 were just absolutely destroyed and have had to be rebuilt and flooded again and rebuilt and so uh, on the wall just down there they've put some uh, some glass flood defenses on there 
to try and stem any further flooding. If you'd like to see more videos like this and be notified the moment I release the next one, make sure you hit the subscribe button. So behind me, that's the theatre by the lake, which is right next to Crow Park. If you get the chance to come down and see you, there's got all sorts of productions on there. I've been there, I've been to see Professor Alice Roberts, the anthropologist. I am a geek, but also Sir Ronald Fiennes, the world's greatest living explorer. And I've seen one or two other adventurers uh, giving talks there as well. So yeah, that's the theatre by the lake. So just over my shoulder there, that's Derwent Water Island. It's the only inhabited island in the Lake District. It's owned by the National Trust. So somebody lives there all year round. I think it's on two or three year contracts. Uh, they're, they're the custodians, but it's open to the public for five days of the year. Now, whenever you come to Keswick, you're guaranteed to see somebody in a black and white Newcastle United shirt. Good lad. So back in the 1800s, when uh, my family were famous lead merchants, we opened up a park in Keswick. You're welcome. There used to be an ice, an indoor ice climbing wall here called Kong, just behind there, and it's shut. It's been shut for about four years. I didn't know. Gutted. Now that building behind me, that you can see the Chief Justice of the Common Pleas, that's a Wellerspoons, and it opened up about four years ago. But before that, that building was the old cop shop, the police station, for about a hundred years or whatever. You can see it's made of that same slate that uh, they probably got from Honister Pass. Unfortunately, the thing about Wellerspoons is, and it's probably the only place in Keswick doesn't allow dogs in. So one of the things I absolutely love about Keswick, because back a few years ago when I was here, I was well into me outdoor stuff, like I said. I'd done uh, all my mountain leader training. I went to Capel Keurig to do my mountain leader course. Also went to Glencoe through the National Mountaineering Centre at Capel Keurig for my winter mountaineering course. Leading up to me doing uh, eventually the mountain leader assessment to become a qualified mountain leader. But um, for one reason or another, I just never got around to doing the assessment. But Keswick is full of outdoor shops. So if you're into your kit and your gear in the outdoor world, this is the porn centre of England and it's my favourite shop is actually Cotswolds but you've got um, George Fisher and Needle Sports and everything if you had I had rucksacks and tents and jackets and boots coming out my ears so when you come to Keswick and try out the pubs you have to go to the dog and gun now a few years ago when I was here it used to be like a grizzly kind of walkers climbers bar but it's been done out in recent years it's lovely inside it's famous for its goulash and you can have a large or a medium size, but really you need an honest hunger before you try the goulash. And I mean like a day on the fells, walking for four, five or six hours. Come back knackered into Keswick, couple of cold pints and a goulash. You've got to do it. So one of the most central buildings and most important and oldest buildings in Keswick is the Moot Hall behind me now, which is the, now the Keswick Information Centre. But dating back to the 1500s, um, when Keswick was at its centre for copper mining, I thought it was the 1700s, but it was the 1500s. This was a, a centre of uh, economics, if you like. It was a really important building, uh, dating back hundreds of years, and it's been built and rebuilt, and it's uh, quite a history behind it. So one of my vices is sweets. I love sweetie shops, and Keswick's got a couple of really good ones, especially this one behind us. I'm going to pop in there and get 200 grams of whatever my heart desires. One of the things I really love about Keswick as well is the eating and the drinking and especially the cafes as well. It's just a, just a buffet of different premises to, to knock yourself out with and most of them are, are dog friendly. It's just a superb place, man. So that's it. I'm off home now, back to the car and I won't tell you where I park because you can park there for now for as long as you want. And uh, I hope you like the video, a bit of an ad hoc one, a um, little visit to Keswick. If you like to give us a thumbs up, tell us what you like about Keswick in the comments below. And if you like the sort of video where I um, visit another town or city, just give us a shout and I'll, uh, I'll put one together. Till next time, catch you later.